Hello, and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam, and on this channel, I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling in a more technical way. Hopefully, it'll whet your appetite to learn more and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video, I'm going to talk about power control. Let's get started. So as I said in the last video, there are really only two ways that most people go about controlling electrical power to their stills. They use an SSVR or a PID. These two devices are kind of hard to compare though. That's because an SSVR actually controls the power going to the heating element. So as you turn the knob, the SSVR will alter that sine wave going into the heating element. Whereas a PID is replacing you and it is the one that's turning the knob on the SSVR or whatever other type of control device is inside it. I'll explain a bit how both of these devices work and why you would choose one over the other. I will also talk about relays, which is another way to do it, but not as advisable. So we'll start with relays. Relay is essentially a remote switch at its most basic. It has two modes, on and off. Uh, they generally come in two flavors. You have electromechanical relays, sometimes called contactors if they flow a lot of power. And then you have solid state relays. They will use something like a transistor inside that acts like a switch, a MOSFET or an IGBT. Stoves, like in your kitchen, typically use a relay to control heating. They turn on and off. You typically see the heating element turn red and then black as it switches on and off. You don't really want to use a relay to control heating with a still because you can't really provide a constant amount of heat energy, which can lead to what's called surging within the boiler. You could technically set up a solid state relay to chop up a sine wave multiple times per cycle to get a certain power output, but that would take connecting it to an intelligent device to control it and some rather complex math. Similarly, there's a method called time proportional control, but it's easier just to use uh, an SSVR. I'll also note that a lot of places online confuse solid state relay or SSR with SSVR. Both Still Dragon and Moonshine Distillers websites list their uh, controllers as having an SSVR when you can, or as having a solid state relay, an SSR, when it clearly says SSVR. So SSVRs or solid state voltage regulators, as you might have guessed, they modify the output voltage and thus the current and power going to the device. But how do they do that? Well, here is the type of SSVR that I use. Power comes in through the top here. Power goes out through the load here. And then there are five different ways to control it. You can connect a pulse width modulation signal, a 4 to 20 milliamp signal, a 0 to 10 volt signal, or a 0 to 5 volt signal. It also has two terminals, a plus 5 volts and a common. So that all you need to do is connect a potentiometer to this to control it. And it's very easy to wire up. This is, uh, the brand is Loncont, and I buy them from a website finglai.com. I will provide the link in the description. The specific one is 220 volts and 150 amps. Cost me about $45 US, I believe. So not super expensive for what you get with it. I also have it with uh, a large, it also came with a large heat sink and a fan. And you can wire the fan directly to the input. So as soon as power gets to this, the fan turns on. So how does an SSVR work? So let's go to the board so I can draw diagrams while describing this to you. All right, so here we are talking about the SSVR at the bench. First, we're gonna be talking about a few other discrete components and how the triac came to be. So we have our diode. It is a simple, one of the simplest semiconductors Think of it as a one-way valve. It only lets power flow one way through it. If this is your input, then your output is going to have half the cycle removed because power can't flow back this way. Then we move up to the thyristor or the SCR. Again, you have your input signal. 
However, this one seems to be cutting off the front edge. That's because it has the gate pin here. This thyristor, this device, will only flow power through it once this gate pin hits a certain voltage. So I've marked it off in these orange parts, but that orange part would be clipped off the front of each half wave. So if it was set to 30 volts, this would only start uh, conducting once 30 volts was applied to this pin here, the gate pin. Then we have the DIAC. This is like a pressure safety valve. It will only start conducting once the voltage on either side is at what is called its breakthrough voltage. So if this was set, if this was built or constructed, uh, which I say manufactured with a 30 volt breakthrough voltage, it would, wouldn't start conducting until the wave hit 30 volts. And then we have a triac, which is like the thyristor, but it can conduct both ways. And it's, again, is still only triggered by uh, an applied voltage to its gate. So again, if this was set at 30 volts, it would only start conducting once you hit 30 volts on this gate pin. So we'll look at the uh, triac chopper circuit. We have our source voltage, we have a lamp. This is gonna be our load. Here's our triac. We have a diac, a variable resistor wired up as a potentiometer and a capacitor. So what happens is, you turn on the power, this variable resistor controls how quickly this capacitor charges. Once the capacitor gets to just about fully charged, it will trigger this diac. Power will flow to the gate of the triac. It will start conducting and then the lamp will turn on. You gotta remember though, this is happening at like 60 times a second. So what actually looks like is that the lamp is dimmer. So this is the input. This is what's coming from our source. And this is what your output looks like. You can see how the front portion of each wave is chopped off. And that's why the, this is called a forward phase, forward phase circuit. You can make reverse phase circuits to chop off the back end. They are a lot uh, safer to use with sensitive electronics since you don't have this spike. You'll probably never see a dimmer built this simple in the field. I don't think any commercial entities make them this simple. They will have uh, an inductor and maybe some other components to make them uh, more robust also so that they don't put out any RF noise. Uh, there are no surges from the sudden switching on. And yeah, that's uh, the SSVR. Super simple or super complex as I showed before. So now we can get to PID controllers. PID stands for proportional integral and derivative. It is a closed loop feedback system that tries to match a measured value with a set value and includes three tunable constants called gain values set by the designer. KP, which is proportional gain, KI, which is integral gain, and KD, which is derivative gain. They all treat a try to keep the system stable. Each section is multiplied by its gain and then added to each other, and this creates the output value for the PID. So to put each section simply, the proportional section controls the amplitude of the output based on the amount of error. And the error comes from subtracting that measured value from the set value. If a system only used proportional control, it would inevitably get into a small oscillation that would bounce back and forth between overshoot and undershoot. This is called steady state error. Too low of a gain value, and it can take too long to reach the set value. Too high of a gain value, and it can easily undershoot the set value and become unstable oscillating back and forth. The integral section tries to fix this steady state error by controlling the rate of change of amplitude. So while the proportional section will look at each instantaneous error and try to correct for that, the integral section is included to smooth out that attempt at altering the output. This is then multiplied by the integral gain value, Ki, and added to the product of the proportional section. Too high of an integral gain value and the system can be sluggish. Too low of a gain value 
and the system can react too quickly and start oscillating. Finally, the derivative section. It is used to fix sudden changes in the error value because it would take a while for the sum of the proportional and integral portions to adjust to any sudden change. The derivative section can adjust the output instantly while the proportional integral part only can only change it after it has caught up because the integral section, remember the integral section is doing this over uh, an average. So the derivative section looks at the trend in the changing of the error and tries to prevent it from happening. Some, of, some people call this predicting, but it actually isn't predicting anything. The faster the rate of change of error, the higher this derivative value. So if there's no change in error, the derivative value will be zero and it won't be adjusting the output at all. Then the gain value for this section determines how quickly it responds to changes in error. As you might be able to tell, having a noisy measurement value can cause problems as the derivative might see that as a uh, rapid changes in error and try to adjust for them which is why you may have to massage the input, average it, or set up some sort of threshold to ignore any noise that comes in. Afterwards, all these sections are summed together and that gives you the output value from the PID. That output value can then be converted into a control method, like an analog voltage from zero to five or zero to 10 volts. It can be turned into a pulse width for pulse width modulation control or into a frequency some AC motors use uh, frequency to determine their uh, RPMs. So yeah, you could directly connect a PID to this to control it because it has pulse width modulation control, zero to 10 volts and zero to five volt control. So when should you use the different kinds of power control? These are realistically the only two options, the SSVR or the PID. I say you should really only use the PID if you're trying to get a neutral spirit and you have a tall packed column. So if this was all packed with copper. So you could set the temperature to 75 degrees and toss out everything you collect. Then set it to 80 degrees, collect all the ethanol that comes out after. And then after that, you could just turn it off because everything else that would be coming out would be tails. For all other cases like gin, whiskey, rum, mezcal, whatever you're making. I'd simply just use an SSVR. You can also wire a power meter in after, which will measure voltage and amperage and calculate the power you're using. And then you can just set it accordingly. And after some experience, you'll know how fast or how much power you should be using for what, for a stripping run or for a spirit run, if you wanna go fast or if you wanna go slow. And that is power control. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something. Please click like and subscribe to see more content like this. Have a great week.